Hey, Anthony Tilly here, and welcome to the Solopreneur Show. Welcome to the Solopreneur Show with your host, Anthony Tilly. To get your hands on more great business training and advice, plus the chance to join our free Facebook group where you will see extended guest interviews, the opportunity of free one-to-one coaching and behind-the-scenes access to Anthony, go to www.thesolopreneurshow.com and join us today. And here's your host, the man himself, Mr. Anthony Tilly. Hey Anthony here, great to uh, great to have you. Really, uh, really looking forward to today's show. We've got a great guest on today's show, Mr. Richard Legg, who is a UK marketer who I've known for I guess about five or six years. And Richard has got a really, a really cool webinar that he's going to talk about. So he's going to talk today about webinars, creating webinars, automated webinars. He's also going to talk about the the need to to be consistent to keep going you're not jumping from project to project but basically keeping on building on what you've got going on now as ever as you know you know if you're listening to this as just the audio uh podcast wherever it is that you've downloaded it from or alternatively you might just be watching uh you know, sort of a shorter video perhaps in our youtube channel or at the uh the solopreneurshow.com forward slash Richard Leg. any one of those locations, you're not going to get to see the full interview. You can only see that full interview with Richard inside of the group, which again, if you go to the solopreneurshow.com, you'll be able to, uh, to see a button there to be able to join our group. And that's what you need to be doing. You need to be getting inside of that group. If though, however, you are inside of the group and you're listening to this, then jobs are good. Okay. So, we're going to have that interview with Richard uh, in a few moments. And what we're also going to be doing as well, at the end of the show, we have two questions this week for Ask Anthony uh, from, just check the names, from Mark and Louise. And interesting questions there with regards to, uh, well, I'm not going to tell you to what. We're going to, we're going to see what it is in the, in the section. All right. So let's crack on now. Let's go and see a great interview with, uh, with Mr. Richard Legg. <laughs> Okay, I'm joined today by Richard Legg. Now, Richard is a funnel specialist. He's an internet marketer. He's a great affiliate marketer, product creator. And as we're going to talk about as well, very committed dad um, to, uh, to his two children. And uh, as part of sort of really one of the things we want to talk about today and sort of explore with regards to the internet marketing lifestyle. Um, so, hey, Richard, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks, everyone. Pleasure to be here. No problem at all. Really, really great that you've taken the time to, to be with us. So thank you very much for that. So, as I said, you know, there's quite a few different sort of bits that, that obviously, um, you know, I know that, that goes on within your business and you and I have known each other for a couple of years now. Um, I'd really be, be great if you could just sort of give us, I, I love hearing people's stories because it's amazing all the different places that people come from within their life. And you're, well, I've never met a physicist before. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> we're dying breed. Oh, so, yeah. So, so, but when people say to you, it's not rocket science, you know, you can just, well, I know a little bit about that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yes, astrophysics, similar. Ah, right, but, no. See, I, I don't know any of this stuff. So, but, yeah, tell us a little bit about, about yourself and the, the physics and, and, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, I mean, for anyone listening, to, um, to explain my accent, I guess, first of all, uh, I was born in the UK, lived here till I was 13, then I moved to Ireland where I went to secondary school and then university where I studied physics. Um, then after that, I got a master's degree, came back to London, did a master's degree in, in physics there as well. Um, while I was in Ireland, I met my wife, who's an American, so we got married then. So yeah, then after that, we moved to America and now back to, to the UK. Um, but yeah, basically, I, I went to, to university. Um, originally, I wanted to join the Air Force when I was in school. So I actually applied for that after I finished school, um, but found out that the, the Irish um, examinations I took wouldn't transfer. So I'd have to do another two years to do reset kind of the A-level equivalent oh, right. and do that. So I thought, oh, never mind that. So I went to university and studied physics, which I've always been fascinated with. Um, did that, met my wife there, and then came back to London to do the master's degree. And while I was there, I was kind of tying, toying with the idea of doing something online. So I was working part-time in like a sandwich shop, as you do when you're a struggling student, uh, you need your beer money. So I was doing that and at good point I was doing 20, 30 hours a week, plus trying to do the coursework, which was quite intensive. Um, I had a one year's master degree, 
to try to cram all that in. It, it was a lot of work. Mm. So I kind of got involved online, tried to find a way to make some money. And back at that point, it was like 10 years ago, a lot of this stuff online were, if I say like pyramid schemes or almost like online chain letters where you pay $5 and you get put on this list and people pay you $5. So that didn't work out very well. Um, but one of the things that got me some results initially was selling info products, um, initially as an affiliate first. So the idea of selling info products and building a list around that. So it's something I did kind of part time while I was while I was studying. And it got to the point where it's at the end of my master's degree and one professor came up to me and said, Richard, there's this really good job opportunity out in Stansted, which I don't know if you're familiar, it's kind of, it's outside London, but it's kind of way outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and you could be earning 16,000 a year. I'm like, oh, and he was really excited about this whole idea. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I'm newly married. I want to have a family. Yeah. How am I going to live on 16,000 a year? I mean, you don't see that many physicists driving around in their Ferraris uh, it's for a good reason. Yeah. So, but at that point, you know, I've, I've been building the internet business. And fortunately, by the time I got to the end of the year, I was able to go full time straight into you know, my marketing. And like the next year after that, I did six figures. And so it was, it was a complete no-brainer really to just continue doing that. And again, I was working as I wanted, when I wanted, and, and got to be from home as well, which, was, which is the main thing. It's, it's important to me. Okay. But, well, that's, that's success pretty quick, actually. What, I mean, I was trying different pieces and, and looking and researching stuff online for a couple of years, I'd probably say, and just kind of dabbling with it. Um, and then, yeah, you brought one or two like, into opportunities, but never really had any success. But once I found something that worked, it was maybe it's kind of the, the science background. I mean, it's just like, okay, this works. How can we build on it? How can we improve it? And so I just kind of kept doing the same thing over and over again. And eventually went from selling stuff as an affiliate to kind of creating my own products. And they were really simple products, first of all. It was just essentially showing people what I was doing mm -hmm. to make money. And actually the first real site that I built it was based on the concept of giving away something for free. So I wasn't even sure that I had anything real value to sell. Mm -hmm. So I would give away something for free, which was the stuff I was doing, teaching people those methods. And then I was selling other stuff on the back end, whether it's affiliate products or, or resale rights products. So I was generating the revenue essentially from products that other people had created. And then once I started realizing, okay, I actually kind of know what I'm doing a bit. I can actually teach this and, and then you know, charge for it. But even then just, just starting out with simple $10 products. Okay, cool. That's it's an interesting point you made there about sort of starting doing the affiliate stuff. So when you were promoting the affiliate products, were you building a list of your own at that point? Yeah, so right at the very start, it was just straight to the affiliate offer. Right. And then I started learning about the idea of the concept of building a list. And then, okay, that's, that makes sense to me, obviously, because then you can contact these people over and over again. So you can follow up with them. If they don't buy that initial offer, you can follow up. If you have additional offers, you can follow up with those too. Uh, but one of the things I did was made a way in a mistake was, you know, as struggling student as it was, I was very, very cheap. Mm -hmm. So I built my first list of about a thousand people on a, a free autoresponder service. Right. So, and this, it worked well for six months, whatever. I built a list of making money with it. And then the guy who was running it decided, well, this isn't making me any money. It's costing me time. So I'm just going to close it. Yeah. And so that was it. I'd lost that thousand person list, which had taken me a long time to build up. I mean, you hear a lot of people now, you know, they have huge lists, but when you're starting out getting a thousand people on your list, it's, it's a big deal. And then to lose that overnight, it was like, oh, <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't pretty. Um, but yeah, I think it was one of those setbacks. It's like, okay, what do I do now? I've done it once. I can do it again. Obviously it's frustrating, but it's, yeah, it's something that taught me very, very early on, which I think I'm grateful for that you need to invest in your business and invest in yourself and do things right. If you, if you want to do this seriously, you need to take it seriously. Yeah. So. yeah no absolutely it's, as you say you know it, it's quite interesting we, we we're both um you know sort of uh you know been doing this for for a while and we've sort of helped you know a lot of people etc and people come to us for advice and you know and and it's amazing the number of people who yeah try and really sort of cut corners and do it as as cheaply as possible now obviously if you're on a budget then you know you can sort of understand that but as you said you know like the, the free autoresponder is you know it's just a no-no isn't it really that's obviously a, le a lesson you've sort of learned yeah i mean not everybody's think that i think okay i can get away with it um so i try and actually share that story with people when they're considering it and i'm like you know this is one of those things you you just have to do it i mean it's relatively cheap it's like 15 20 a month um so it's 
in the grand scheme of things, it's not a lot. You know, if you have to cut out a couple of Starbucks a month or, you know, your Big Mac, yeah. there are ways to find $15, $20 a month, even if you have to, I don't know, sell something you own to give you, you know, six months worth of it. It's, it's an investment you need to make. And I think you take it more seriously when you, when you've made that investment, it's, it's kind of real. There's a commitment there to it. And you're, I think you're more likely to follow through yeah. because you invested in it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. So obviously there's so many different um, mediums and ways in which to, to contact people, you know, these days with Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat, et cetera, et cetera. But do you still, um, you know, is, is the, is the sort of the cornerstone of your business still that email list and, uh, and sort of marketing to them? Yeah, pretty much. I must admit, I'm, I'm not down with the kids with all the, the Snapchat and stuff. So. <laughs> Even on Facebook, we just said, well, I'm typically a, a lurker. Most stuff is there is just kind of, you know, family pictures or whatever. So yeah, communication has been primarily through email. Um, I like it because, you know, you can write as you want and when you want. And so you can queue up emails to go out whenever you need to. So I can spend a day if I want to writing a, a week's worth of, or two weeks worth of emails yeah. and have them ready to go out. So there's no real commitment to be there and, and constantly with the selfies and the whatever and sending pictures. I don't know. Maybe I'm way behind the times or I'm getting old before my time. But no, email's always been working for me. And it's, yeah. it's, like I say, the cornerstone really. Yeah. So, so how, how old are your kids? I've got an eight year old and a three year old. Ah, so right. okay. yeah. give, it, give it a couple more years and yeah, you'd be like, will you get off that tablet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, right, right now we kind of find that balance because a three year old, there's the educational side of things where it's really helped him like tracing letters on the, on the screen or whatever. It's really helped him, but yeah. you have to balance that with how much time. So it's, yeah, we're very, very rationing that. And it's kind of a treat almost. When yeah. We, yeah. I, I must admit, you know, so yes, you know, Snapchat and Instagram and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. You know, my, my knowledge is based purely on, uh, you know, on having a 14 year old son, I must admit. So I've, yeah. I've sort of adopted Instagram that one I'm, I'm sort of getting there, but yeah, Snapchat, I think that's kind of, I think there's almost a commitment once you start that. You feel like you have to keep it up then, otherwise yeah. what's the point? And for me, I don't know, I'm very big on freedom and not having to, to commit to anything like that if I have to, particularly for, for business. Yeah. So I try and make sure that, you know, I'm working on my terms as much as possible. Because for me, the, the business is kind of a means to an end. It's, you know, it, it pays for my lifestyle so I can spend time with my family, doing the stuff that I want to when I want to and, and not feeling like I have a, a boss or deadlines or all this kind of stuff that most people want to escape from, but yeah. many marketers find themselves having those deadlines and they're, you know, they're trying to do the next product launch and they've got to do all this work and, and 16 hour days to pull it off. And it's, that's not for me. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, you're absolutely right. And I think if you are constantly you know, launching products all the time, I think that then like, it's almost hand in hand, the Facebook kind of stuff comes with it where, you know, you, cause you've got to sort of keep yourself in the, almost in the in the eye within the you know within the sort of the niche that you're in within your little sort of community etc and you've just got to keep it keep it going and you said you know when we were talking earlier and before the call one of the things that i said to you was that you know my window on your world really is is just facebook and that's what one of the things that i really like yeah is that you just clearly just use it for for members of your family being tagging you in on pictures pretty much i mean originally we kind of got it started because when we moved to to america my family is either in england or ireland mm -hmm. when i moved to america we were there for four years it was mainly for a way for people just to stay in touch because we had our first son about a year after we moved to america mm -hmm. And obviously you say the grandparents were, were missing that. So it was a way for everybody kind of to get that window into our life and, and see what we were up to so they could kind of watch the kids grow, but from afar rather than just be completely kind of blank, not, yeah. not knowing what's going on. And so I definitely communicate with people on Facebook, but I'm not the type to just kind of post. And I, I, don't, I'm, I don't like to, to brag or whatever it was. So most of the stuff is, yeah, it's going to be us on holidays or day trips or pumpkin picking for Halloween or, or something like that. So it's, that's pretty much what Facebook is for me. And, and then business is more, you know, it's more personal. I feel like it's one-to-one, -one, you know, people, you know, you can get Facebook messenger or through email or Skype or whatever, but just kind of blasting out to the world. It's, it's, it's not really my style. I think. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I must admit it, it's one of those things where, <clears throat> you know, I put some stuff on there from, from sort of time to time, but I must admit it's like, I think oh, I better put something on me. <laughs> Yeah. Once you start it's, it, you're going to communicate. You know, it's not that I think, oh, I'm drinking a beer. I've got to show it to somebody. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Well, you know, I just put some, just to, you know, just to keep remember, you know, so people remember who I am, you know, <laughs> here's a picture of a pint I'm drinking. 
yeah. Well, yeah, my life wouldn't be that glamorous sitting there in my PJs <laughs> after get the kids in bed. But, but yeah. yes, I mean, I don't have the big flashy lifestyle, but I have the lifestyle that I want, which is yeah. time with my family and get to grow up with my kids. And, and that, that's really kind of what I wanted. Um, it's just that freedom more than anything. It's, it's an interesting point you made. This is, this is something that I was, uh, I was talking to somebody else about recently. And I think, you know, a lot of people, you know, we, we see all the, the videos of the, you know, the gurus or whatever you want to say, you know, with their Ferraris and, you know, taking pictures of themselves in jets and, you know, blah, 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 all that kind of thing. And, you know, people say, oh, I want to be rich. But actually, yeah, and this, I've, I've been reading, actually, I have it, I have it just here, um, which is man in, in Babylon, sort of reading, reading that at the minute. And it's, it's very interesting that actually when you sit down, <clears throat> I think a lot of us don't realize actually we are incredibly rich already um, with you know, what, what we have with the, with the families, with the home, you know, and, and with the freedom that, that doing, this, doing this sort of job you yeah. know, allows you. But I think a lot of people I know as well, particularly even in the marketing world, like they're working 16 hour days under the guise of hustle and all this kind of stuff. And it's, they just burn out. They don't see their families. And, and then the way they build their business, there's no longevity to that. So they do that one. And then the next month, they need to do something else to keep the money coming in. And it's just, they're spending so much time in their business. Yeah. Where they, if they had a regular job, they'd probably have a lot more free time. Um, and even still, even more, you know, professionals where I live in London, a lot of people, they get up really, really early. They leave the house before the kids get up. They get home, just time tuck them into bed. And I just couldn't imagine doing that. So, I mean, for me, it's, it's, it's not about making as much money as I can. Yeah. Um, I think before I had kids, it was and just starting out. Once you start seeing that success, you always want it to grow. And it becomes almost a point where it's like a, a high score. And like, how can I beat my next high score? Yeah. Um, but then if once I had kids, it's very much, again, you need to find that right balance between making money and making freedom for yeah. myself. So I think that's where I've been really, really focused on. Yeah, no, it's... It's, it's interesting you said you know, with the age that, that, that your children are and that, that mine are, um, 20 and um, 14. So I just, <laughs> the reason I'm reiterating that is because the call I did actually tell Richard the wrong ages. But, <laughs> so, but the age they're at now, actually, it now gives me time to do more within my video. You know, I find now, actually, I'm working more now than I probably was about five or six years ago because you know, obviously one's gone and let you know gone to university yeah. and, and the other one um you know he still needs just driving to rugby matches and that's, that's yeah about it. so but it's nice to have had the time that i've had with them and you know it's the same for yourself you know you you know you was you were saying earlier you, know, you pretty much find yourself working in between naps yeah <laughs> so yeah are. not your naps yeah <laughs> well i take the odd nap now and again bit of a cheeky nap but yeah so our youngest is is three years old and we have a nursery three days a week um mainly because i think it's good for social interaction for kids mm -hmm. um but then that gives me time to work my wife right now she she does contracting so she could be working for three months and take a few months off mm -hmm. so we're, we're both fortunate they can be quite flexible um but yeah so he's three now he'll be in school next year and and then that point then i can work a bit more but right now it's like i'm enjoying this time yeah. with him you know I take monday and friday whatever spend time with him and it's something that once they're off going to school, you can't get back. So I can work once they're at school, I'll, I'll probably work more. Um, but right now I want to make sure I just enjoy that time with them. And cause yeah, we've, I've seen it's cliche, but they just grow up so fast. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've been doing this since 2010. And one of the things that really sort of spurred me on was that, that Jake, my eldest, one of the very first sentences that he said, well, actually was daddy's gone to work. <laughs> And you're like, my wife yeah. told me that. I was like, oh my God, you know, it's uh, because I was just, I was working in retail. I was, you know, I was one of the, one of the managers there. Uh, I was one of the assistant managers actually at, at that time. And, you know, I did the rotors. I was always Mr. Incredibly nice. So if somebody was ill or, or you know, I'd be there. I think, oh, well, I'll put myself in. I'll be all right. I'll do, I'll do, no. So I was doing nine to eight shifts. I was doing Saturdays. I was doing Sundays, et cetera, et cetera. And to say, you know, we just, you know, daddy's gone to work. I was like, right, this, this has got to, this has yeah. got to stop. You know, because you, you won't ever get that time back. I say, yeah, for me, it's just, it's just really important. And I think I had that goal before I ever got, got really started that I wanted to, to be, you know, a good dad and, and be present and, and be there to watch my kids grow up. And so that's something I focused on very, very much um, in my business. And it's one thing, even when we had our first child, it was, 
we lived in America, so the house is there, everything's bigger than here in, in mm-hmm. London. But we had a house, so I had a separate office, and it's very much where I could, at the end of the day, I could close that office door as such mm-hmm. and feel like I was going home. So there's a different separation between work and home. So even though I had to still work, it wasn't like I was there at the kitchen table and not paying attention to the kids. It was yeah. once I'm home, that's it, daddy, I'm in daddy mode. Yeah, yeah. And, no, and the thing that makes a big difference. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely does. So, so obviously we wax lyrical about, <laughs> uh, about this. So people can, yeah, for the gods, just get on with it and tell us, tell us how you make your money. So yeah, like I said, started off doing the affiliate marketing and then I got to creating my own products. Mm-hmm. And, and that was kind of where the bulk of my income came for, for several years. Um, doing that side by side with, with affiliate marketing in, in different markets as well. It got to a point though where Google was quite an unpredictable mistress. Mm-hmm. So I kind of moved away from the affiliate marketing side in terms of like SEO and focused more on kind of product creation and building an email list and affiliate marketing that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and they kind of evolved. Like I said, I started off selling $10 products, building up to you know $100 range. And eventually the kind of the bigger breakthrough came when I started doing more higher ticket stuff, so for $1,000 or $2,000, was selling rather than just, excuse me, the information, it was, it was more kind of done for you services. Where one of the things I found by doing this for so long is that people are always going to find roadblocks or speed bumps along the way. Mm-hmm. Some people will power through them. Some people, it's, they see it as just some insurmountable obstacle that they can't overcome mm-hmm. and for whatever reason they, they, they give up on it and so for me if, if I'm selling something to somebody I want them to be able to use it and get value out of it so it's no good if if the training I put out there works for some people but for other people it doesn't work so I found the done for you stuff it costs a little more but I can give them something that works so rather than spending you know five hundred dollars on a something that's half complete and not going to do anything which is a waste of that five hundred dollars they could pay a little bit more and get something that's guaranteed to work and they can get a return on that. So I started selling more of those packages. And then one of the best ways for selling high ticket items online is through webinars rather than just kind of a straight uh, sales letter or video sales letter. Mm-hmm. The problem with webinars is that you have to be present on them. And being in the UK as well, our market is very much catered to the U S yeah, yeah. so first of all, I don't like saying the same thing over and over again, if I can and help it. Mm-hmm. And, I don't want to be up till 2 or 3 a.m. to do a webinar because the kids don't care. You've been up to 2 or 3 a.m. <laughs> They're still going to wake up. Daddy, daddy, I want breakfast. <laughs> so one of the best things that's happened in my business is through using automated webinars. Mm-hmm. And so these run 24-7. And basically you record the, the content once and you give that presentation once, whether it be a PowerPoint or, or whatever you do, the way you normally deliver a webinar. And then you, you load it up into the automated webinar software and then it just runs every day, 24 hours a day, so that people can view it as and when they want to. Okay, as ever, we are going to cut uh, that interview short. If you're listening to this, the podcast, or if you're on the YouTube channel, yes, you know, you're only going to get the, the 20 minutes of it. You want to be listening to the whole thing. You need to be going to uh, the solopreneurshow.com forward slash Richard Leg, where you can hear the full interview. Where, as I say, you know, as I said at the top of the show, Richard is going to share some really, really great hints, tips, and strategies for you in terms of creating webinars, automated webinars, making sure they convert. And then also as well, he's talking about the importance of, you know, of longevity of a project. So really, really important that, uh, that if you're not inside the group, you go and check that out. So that said, let's, uh, let's move on to the next section of the show. And now it's time for my favorite part of the show. It's Ask Anthony. Okay, so it's Ask Anthony. So we have two questions today, two questions. First question comes from Mark, and Mark's question is, what do I think of ClickFunnels? Okay, what do I think of ClickFunnels? I think ClickFunnels is awesome. Um, I, I really like it. You know, I've, I've been, uh, I'm actually, I'm, I'm he's, you know, he's asked me, I'm glad he didn't ask me what I thought of lead pages because I'd be like, to be honest, I don't have a clue. So he's asked me, what do I think of ClickFunnels? He's obviously seen Russell Brunson, etc. cetera, uh, here, there and everywhere on Facebook promoting it. And you know, he has these like ClickFunnels ambassadors and people can make really great money, actually, I think from, from building funnels and selling the funnels, which is, is pretty cool. Um, if you guys, uh, you know, you're listening to this interview, 
if you're inside of the group, you would have heard the full Nicola Cairncross interview. And she talks about, uh, there's a few sites that she talks about. You can go and find out the type of person you are. And if you go and do those tests that Nicola talks about in uh, in the interview um, there, you could actually go and have a little look and find out. And you might find that that actually going and joining ClickFunnels and becoming a funnel creator might actually be perfect for your archetype. So it's just, a, a, again, another another tip there. So if you haven't listened to the full interview of Nicola, I, I highly suggest that you do. And, uh, you know, if you're listening to the podcast, again, you know, just go and find it at uh, thesolopreneurshow.com forward slash Nicola Cairncross and you can join the group and you can come in and hear the whole thing. But obviously we're, we're here today with this question. What do I think of ClickFunnels? I think ClickFunnels is really great. I personally use it within my business. Um, either, you know, some, I like messing around. You, I think you probably said again uh, on these shows, you know, I I do like creating my own stuff. I enjoy it. It's it's something that I enjoy. I do these days far outsource things far more than, than I used to, but I still do enjoy fiddling around and creating stuff. And there are times when I think, you know what, it's just easier for me to spend 20 minutes doing this than going and explain it to somebody what it is that I, I want to do and click funnels is is great for that they've got some great tutorials but what I would suggest don't get too hung up on the tutorials um, and a few people that you know are basically working their way all the way through the videos and this really to be honest with you this goes with most things you know have a look at a couple of videos but don't go and watch every single one just get in and start having a fiddle start having a mess around you're not going to break it you know, you, <laughs> you're not going to break the internet by doing this. So, you know, you want to get in and and get going with that and just start fiddling, having a messing around and, you know, just seeing what you can do in there. But I really like ClickFunnels. You know, it's not cheap. I think it's you know, $97 a month, but it's it really it is, I would say, an essential tool. Either that, you know, lead pages, those kind of things. So they are essential tools. And this is the beauty, again, going back actually to what I talked about in an earlier show with Nicola. You know, we were talking about how long we've been online and the fact that, you know, back in the day there was there was none of this drag and drop and et cetera, et cetera. You know, it was all sitting there with the, with the code. And the stuff you made looked amateurish. Whereas today, you can, you know, you can knock up an amazing looking site and page, et cetera, and funnel for yourself at home um, with a product that's only $97 a month. So it's absolutely superb. So again, listen, you know, if, you, if you listen to the podcast, go to um, the solopreneurshow.com forward slash Richard Leg, and I'll put a link there for, for ClickFunnels. So anybody who uh, you know doesn't know what ClickFunnels is, then you, know, you can go there and, and, and get it. And um, you know, if you're in the group, I'll, I'll put, something, put something here as, as well for a link for ClickFunnels. So I think ClickFunnels is great. If you were looking to build you know, funnels, squeeze pages, um, automated webinars, upsells, downsells, cross-sells, memberships, uh, free with shipping gifts, uh, you know, all that kind of kind of thing. Um, ClickFunnels is a great thing to do it. So I, I would suggest that, uh, that you're going to have a look at that. Okay, next we have a question from uh, Louise. And Louise's question is, what is an OTO? Okay, OTO, that stands for one-time offer. Some people say it stands for one-time only offer, but that, of course, would be an OTOO. A OTO or an OTO, okay, a one-time offer, is something that is is put in place that t- traditionally, you know, it's it's meant to be. You only see it one time, okay. So you could opt into a squeeze page and you see an offer, seven dollar book. It's, that is that is what people class as an OTO. It's basically it's it's an offer. That's basically what it is. It's an offer. You know, you go from through the funnel whether it be via through a squeeze page usually that's what it is it's a squeeze page you've got something for free and then there's an oto behind it some people call it a, a tripwire and the idea they call it a tripwire basically what it means is it means that you are differentiating between a free person on your list and a buyer um so but it's 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 low you know you know what tripwires obviously tripwires are like that far off the ground yeah rather than being <laughs> around here you know they're they're here they're low so it indicates the price the price is low okay so four dollars seven dollars nine dollars depending on what you've got going on in the background okay so you know people sort of will, will sort of set it as to whatever is appropriate um with what's going on in the background but also they will also set it as appropriate for for their niche okay because different niches will spend different amounts of money and have different perceptions of what is uh, a high a high ticket offer so that's what that's a tripwire so it's a low price offer basically designed to get you from being a freebie seeker 
to a buyer because as we all know uh, you know having a buyer's list is just like a hundred times thousand times more valuable than than having a, a list of free people you know I personally would have you know any day of the week I would have 500 buyers on my list than you know 50,000 freebie seekers okay it's it's far far better so OTO, uh, Louise, uh, basically that stands for one-time offer and usually it's the it's the offer, it's the sales page that is behind the squeeze page that basically is trying to convert you from a free person into a buyer um, because that's that's how you know, us as marketers, we can, we can then know that people are serious. They're not just in for the free stuff because it is important to invest in yourself. It's important um, for, for us, you know, as, as marketers to not go looking for everything for free all the time. Yeah, you know, I like free... I like free if it's good content. I love looking on YouTube for, for little informational videos or, you know, how-to videos. I think YouTube is great for that. Um, the the amount of times I've done things or I couldn't do something, I've gone and looked at it on YouTube and found the answer has just been awesome. So that, though, is essential that you, you know, you invest in yourself. And that's what the uh, that's what the OTO is there for, Louis. So I really hope that helps. Okay, so guys, we come to uh, come to the end of our show again today. And as you know, we're in uh, we're in launch mode, so uh, we're doing this one of these every day for seven days. So if you haven't subscribed to to get notifications, etc., then please do so. Make sure you're actually doing the downloads on on iTunes, Google Play, getting those downloads up for us, putting reviews on the site for us as well. Really helping us to to spread the word. You know, it really is essential. We get to get this information out to as many people as possible, and. And um, if you haven't joined the group, it's highly essential you do. But today's episode at the Solopreneur Show, it's uh, it's forward slash Richard Legg. So uh, solopreneurshow.com forward slash Richard Legg. You can see the edited video and uh, you can also see, I'll, as I say, I'll put the link there to, to click funnels for you as well. All right. So, oh, and I'll put the link for, for Richard's offer as well. Cracky, nearly forgot. Okay, guys. So I will see you tomorrow and inside of the group if you're there please put any comments any questions you want you know keep those questions coming in guys because obviously that's uh, you know that's a big part of the show and it will become bigger and bigger i am absolutely certain so that said anthony tilly signing out i will see you tomorrow take care bye now to get your hands on more great business training and advice plus the chance to join our free Facebook group where you will see extended guest interviews, the opportunity of free one-to-one coaching and behind-the-scenes access to Anthony, go to www.thesolopreneurshow.com and join us today.